business of branding, John asked me to uh, talk a little bit about you know, what's actual branding and, uh, and how's the, how do you actually utilize it in your actual business. Um, and this is a challenge that you know, I've come across before and now I actually help other firms to actually um, go through the process. So I'll start here. Like, why do we even care? But that's, that's the first point. Why do we even care about branding? What does it actually matter? Let me see here, heart pills, $2. Who's gonna buy those? And the reason is we care is everyone's got a choice. All customers have a choice. We, we can't control our customers as much as we want, it, want them to, as, as much as we want to control them and uh, they're gonna buy from us. But we, we've got to influence them. So they've always got a choice. And what we want from our customers, we want to be heard. We want to be listened to. We want them to understand what we're actually talking about and to say that, you know, we've got something of value to actually uh, contribute. And most importantly, and the psychology about it, is about we want to be loved. And we want, so that's a fundamental human need, isn't it? And, um, and from that fundamental human need, we want to be valued. We turn up to work, we spend so much time actually going to work every single day, doing stuff, putting our heart and soul into our work, and we want to know that it's actually of value. We want to know that people actually appreciate all this great, all the work. You've seen, obviously, the guys from um, Business Depot, John and everyone, how much work they've actually put into um, creating this, even creating just the Depot X. There's a lot of work and lots of team members involved. So we want to know that everything we're doing is of value. And we want to make sure that, that it's of so much value that people actually want to buy from us. And also of so much value that people actually want to end up sometime by our business. And so on the business side of things, it's, you know, I've heard other, I had a previous CEO that I used to work for used to say that oh, branding, it's all that fluffy stuff, you know, don't, don't really know what it is. I can't really put a, um, you know, a business case around it. But you just need to look at these guys here and what they've done. So the business side of it is, you know, we really create a premium for our brand, a premium price. People are going to pay a little bit more. I know I've paid a little quite a lot more for these things than, uh, than some of the competitors. But also we create some loyalty around it as well. So where those customers do have a choice, there's a loyalty for actually people to come back and they know that they're gonna get something what they're, um, what they're expecting and they're expecting something great. We also, what a brand does is it provides a platform to actually grow your business. So, big part of growing your business is providing something that's scalable and repeatable. You know, everyone talks about having a personal brand. A personal brand's great, but for a business side of things, pretty hard to replicate that. And so what a business does, and often you see from um, the leaders of those businesses, when they actually get together and say, we're gonna create something that's gonna be repeatable. We're gonna be, provide something that's, uh, that's gonna be scalable. So you just need to look at these guys again. What they've done is created things, repeated that same process over and over again for the last decade or two, and obviously scale that up so everywhere around the world you know what this thing is. It's not the sexiest logo either. So talking about the, the business of branding, I thought I'd actually give you a bit of a, um, a story actually has, how do, how do we actually create it? Because there's, that's not me, by the way. And it's not me a couple of years ago when I had hair. Um, so I thought I'd actually talk about, you know, because we all want to know, well, how do we create, how do we replicate what Apple did? You know, they've obviously been doing it for quite a while and quite good at it, but how do we, because in everything that we do, actually replicate something that even comes close to this? And so I thought I'd actually tell you a bit of a story about some of my, my background, my experience. So the background was, I was, um, I came back, I was living overseas, came back to Australia. I was working for a, um, uh, a management consulting firm down in Melbourne. And they said, um, you know, do you want to actually come up to, come up to Brisbane? We want to grow our business. So we want to, the challenge was that they'd, they had an office in Sydney, the head office down there. They had a, um, an office in Melbourne. They were trying to expand that management consulting business into obviously Brisbane. And, um, and obviously over to, to Perth and, 
and so forth. So they really wanted to, to scale their business. They really wanted to grow that business. They wanted to make sure that, that they could actually compete. So they hadn't actually had the challenge that, they, that I was faced with when they asked me to come back up to Brisbane was that they'd already been, had someone in Brisbane for about four years. And when they asked me, I grew up in Brisbane, and so they said, oh, well, do you want to go back, back to Brisbane? And over that four years, they'd had four different leaders in Brisbane and hadn't even made a profit. They only had one, one leader and they had some two junior staff. And the junior staff were always, for each week, got on a plane, flew down to Sydney because there was no work. They couldn't find any work in Brisbane. And so they asked me, well, can we actually turn this thing around? Can we actually build something here? Can we build something that's going to be great? So I sort of went, well, we'll give it a shot, as we all do. Sort of went, well, this seems like a bit of a challenge. If it, if it works, it works. Um, but I said, OK, well, I'll do it my way, though. I want to make sure we actually see this bit as a um, We'll do it the way that I wanted to actually do. I've worked for a number of other consulting firms before and saw that some of the ways they hadn't sort of worked quite well and other ways that you know, some did, well, did work well. So I wanted to actually bring those two things together. You know, there were some, some elements around what the company had before this. They had a logo, as many consultancy, many organizations, small businesses, it actually, you know, everyone starts off when they start a business, I'll create a logo and everything sort of develops from there. And so they went, well, we've got a logo, I don't need to do any branding. The CEO went, oh, there's, there's not much value in, couldn't see the value in actually branding. He said, just get out there and sell. Just, I want you to go have meetings and just sell, just sell, just sell. And uh, so I went, well, all right, this is going to be, you know, give that a shot. But surely there's got to be an easier way. Um, they, they always say laziness is the um, you know, start of innovation. So uh, I think um, that I always tell, used to tell my mum, not, not lazy, just innovative. So um, the challenge that I had was, there was a whole heap of space. And they said, we just need to fill up, fill up this space. We want all these people working in this office. We will really want to grow this thing from here. Um, and I looked around and I knew that you know, the, business, this, uh, the business at that time had about, uh, I think about 75 people working in the organization, uh, majority in Sydney, Another uh, 20 or so were down in um, in in Melbourne, and where they where they had that logo, they hadn't really done anything else beyond that, and so I knew it. Well, oh, guys, like we need to do some more on this marketing. There was this challenge of how do we actually build this business because we knew that everyone else, um, the guys who we were competing with, were you know, your PwC, um, Deloitte, all those big four guys. We're also competing with your strategy guys and your Kinsey's, your Bain, Boston Consulting Group and even your one-man bands, um, be the, the smaller, um, smaller management consulting firms. And everyone else was getting work, but I was going, why isn't, why, why, why weren't we getting any work? This just didn't seem right. We had a, down in Sydney, Melbourne, had a great product, great service. It all worked quite well, but up here it wasn't working quite well. So I actually decided, we'll find out what actually happened. So I spent a lot of money make sure I claimed it all on coffees. I had a, quite a bad coffee addiction by the end of this. So I went around and just researched, just went around to all, of, all our um, potential customers and just asked them, have you heard of us? Um, you know, did you know what we were about? Um, you know, had you been to any conferences? Have you actually seen the, the firm out and so forth? And I got all these reactions like, go, no, who are you? What are you even here for? Um, one company even, uh, the, name of the, the name of the company was very similar to uh, a name of a cement, type of cement. So I was turning up trying to sell management consulting. This ter person turned around to me and said, why are you trying to sell me cement? And I was like, okay, well obviously there's a bit of an issue. So there was a huge issue. There was a huge issue. No one actually knew who we were. No one, um, no one knew what we actually stood for. And so to actually get work was really difficult. And I know but there's people starting up their business, those small, medium businesses. Um, within here, I know you probably sat on the other side of a desk and felt the same thing where people just go, you want that client, they've just gone, who are you guys and, and why are you talking to me? So what I did, I went back and said, okay, well, what is branding? What is it? What's the problem here? What's the big problem that we're, we're facing? And the big problem was that we actually look at branding and the business of branding, and there's a big difference between as well branding and marketing. Marketing is really a subset of it. 
Branding's all about, let's see if this thing works, promise and delivering on that promise. So in simple terms, doing what you said you're going to do. Promising you can actually can help something, help people with something, and then actually deliver on that. And consistently do it again and again and again. That's a reputation. So the challenge that I, in addition to the challenges I mentioned before, the other things we had was, um, you know, because it was a new branch, a satellite branch in Brisbane, and the headquarters was down in Sydney, we couldn't change any of the colours, couldn't change the logos, um, couldn't change a whole lot of stuff. So we had to build a brand without actually changing any of the things that most people think of is all about branding, all the colours and so forth. But really, the colours and the logo is just a small element of what branding is. Branding is really about telling people what you're actually going to do for them and then following through with it. And then following through is not just about providing that great piece of work to them, it's about every single touch point that you have with them. It's everything you do, how you greet them, um, what clothes you wear, how do you speak to them, what sort of language you're using on websites, on, on blogs, on everything. Everything is inclusive of what you're talking about in branding. So what we did, we looked through and there's what they call the three C's of branding, be it credibility, clarity and consistency. So we went through every element. Because the branding and, and this time was a management consulting firm. So what we need to do, we need to build a business by attracting clients, but I need to also build a business to actually attract some staff. So it's a brand on both sides. And so we went through this three C's on everything. Every touch point we had was three C's. So credibility, could we actually deliver on what we said we were going to deliver? So in our marketing, we said, okay, this is our credibility. Here's all our credibility that we've, um, of all the things we've done for other clients down in Sydney at Melbourne. Um, clarity, making sure there was a single point of uh, a focus on the service we actually provided. While down in Sydney and Melbourne, they're actually providing a lot of different services. We went, this is confusing the market up here. We just need to be very clear about what we actually uh, provided and chose a point in that time at that market where there was a service that everyone wanted. So we um, looked at the clarity. And then consistency. So making sure we knew exactly, we did the same thing over and over and over again. So training, 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 training. We train people on how to actually engage with our um, clients. We train people on actually how to hire people. So the, um, the whole process of selecting candidates to actually work, uh, work for us, we actually made sure everyone knew exactly the type of people. So making sure we even had you know, the similar theme of people and then what we did, so the results of that was that within two years of going through that whole process, making sure we branded, um, delivered, on the, um, delivered on our promise consistently to our clients, what we ended up doing was within two years, our revenue went from almost zero to $2 million a year. And the best thing I love about branding is there's an exponential improvement. So we talked about before being about scalability and repeatability. The following year, we started making a million dollars a month consistently. And so towards the end of that year, it was making more than, way more than a million dollars a month. And we also talked about you know, providing um, that loyalty and making sure that you know, we command a premium for our product. So we kept on, I don't know why, and there's lots of other consultancy firms out there, and anyone who's got a consultancy firm out, out there, and you dis generally discount off your rates, 10%, 15%, just because they're a nice client. Um, and sorry if everyone hires consultants here, um, but stop doing it. It actually hurts your brand. So what we ended up doing was we stopped, we absolutely just stopped discounting. I said, no need for this. If, if we can build up something and build up something so good that people want to come back to us, consistently time and time again, we don't need to uh, provide a discount. And all you need to do is think about Apple and trying to buy Apple somewhere. No matter where you go, you hardly ever get a discount on that, on that product. It's because they've built up such a great brand that you can actually do it. So our profit margin, so almost 40 million, um, over a million dollars a month, most people were you know, generally providing 10 to 15% discount just because they, we thought clients wanted it. So we, once we stop doing that, if we do some simple maths, that's an extra $100,000 a month to pure profit. So we talk about the business of branding and talking about a return on investment. 
that's a pretty easy one to sell. So just some final thoughts. Branding's about everything that you do. So yes, while there's color, John's and his team have done great work here, but they've also done a great, great work in delivering on that promise of getting people, having the relationship for free, you know, getting, getting the drinks for free as well. So um, it's in everything you do. So whenever you're thinking about building the branding of your business, think about everything. It's really managing expe client expectations as well. So another way to think about it, if you're not thinking about managing expectations, you're not thinking about branding. And, and conversely, if you're not thinking about about branding, you're not thinking about managing your client expectations. And if you're not managing your client expectations very well, you're not going to have a business for very long. So that's it. All right. Thank you.